Hello YouTube, this is an alcohol review of Nelson's Greenbrier Tennessee Whiskey. Dun, dun. I myself have a love for the old style font and the way they used to do things. So this label caught my eye right off the bat. According to said label, this is a 45.5% alcohol by volume, 750 ml bottle. The back goes on to explain that this is their great, 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 great grandfather's uh, recipe that they used and was able to revitalize. But what caught my eye on this is the fact that they mentioned they used sugar. Where is it here? Oh. Uh, sugar maple charcoal as a clearing agent or at least one of the means to help clear the uh, solution here and i find that interesting in that the obviously they're hoping that through that charcoal they're going to get some sort of flavoring out of it that is obviously on on the sweet side as a sugar maple so Obviously, I'm going to take sugary maple flavor out of it. That I'm curious. I'm curious if they were able to get that. Mainly because you never look at what kind of charcoal that you're using normally. I mean, maybe you should, but we don't when it comes to like, filtering our water or anything else along that line to see if it's going to impart some sort of flavor into our water or whatever that we're filtering through. So I'm curious if, if that we were successful in that or whether or not it was just an economic or whether it was simply just a good idea. I mean, it sounds great on the label. But, like I said, cool label. It's even um, textured and a whole bit. Quite nice. The reason why this stands out for me is that I spent many, 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 many years working in the print industry when it comes to marketing and advertising and it's just it's just not appreciated that style of artwork and effort anymore in this age of computers sad it is a plastic cork with a wood top and the wood top is labeled itself so that's nice to see i uh, wish it would have used all cork but hey what are you gonna do and that's only my particular preference. No real reason why. It's just, I like cork. Plastic or this type of synthetic material. It's, eh, cork. And this is what we get. It is a beautiful caramel color with heavy yellow notes. Tears up very evenly. Quite surprised. But then again, I'm comparing it to the last several bourbons I have have had. And usually just get one here, one there. This is, this is almost like watching ice just crackle come right down. It doesn't go very far. But it is fairly even. Smoky, caramelly, there's a heavy sting in the nose, a heavy burn, mm. very strong, only 45.5, it's still, it's, the nose is rough. Will that determine much? Well, we'll see. Oftentimes the nose will determine, obviously, the taste. 75% of what you get on the palate is what you get through the nose. Seeing it stick heavy on the side of the glass, that uh, slow but even to uh, tear up means it's on a thick side. So I'm expecting a, from what I can see and what I can smell, I am expecting a, uh, heavy on the palate 
not quite syrupy, but leaning in that kind of direction because of the difficulty in its tearing. And I am expecting a lot of the, there to be bites out of it uh, from the too much alcohol. Or not enough flavor, but too much alcohol biting through it. And light on flavor, because it's a light on the nose. And the flavors are going to be your, your standard whiskey flavor with your caramel and other uh, fruit notes that are creep up through the bottom. But we'll see. Wow. Hmm. I would like to say I'm wrong, but I'm right and wrong. What I'm getting, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm right and wrong. Let's go with the, uh, the right part first, just because my poor ego. You immediately get hit with great flavors. Absolutely wonderful fruity notes and caramel just comes right in with you. Just it's fantastic. Up front greets you to like a giant warm hug. There's uh, layers on it. There's orange. There's you know, there's the, there's that lemon, caramel. Uh, one of the best tasting whiskeys. F the, those flavor wise, I've had in a long, long time. Absolutely wonderful. I would have to say this is definitely a, a sipping whiskey, and not one you would add into a cocktail, because all those flavors are just absolutely too wonderful to uh, to cover up in in some sort of cocktail. Mm -hmm. That usually that bittery from the alcohol, the ethanol, barely there to interfere with those great flavors. Just all around wonderful on that part. Now, let's go to the part where, you no, know, I guess I was wrong. I was right on the other side of that coin. Can't think of it right now. But that first sip. It's like taking an ice pick to your tongue and just stabbing it through constantly. And as it would fade out, you can tell that other parts of your tongue were getting to it later. So as the flavor, the hang time would start to fade, that stabbing of all of that, that ethanol alcohol which is simply remove itself from one part of your tongue and go to a different part of your tongue. It started literally in the middle and went to the back and then it ended on the tip of my tongue. Very unpleasant. Not, not good, not good at all. The hope is, is that the more you sip it, the more you either get used to it, your, your tongue, your, your taste buds acclimate to those flavors, to, to some of those harsh, harsh ship edges. And yes, you do, your tongue does start to acclimate to it, but it doesn't simply go away. It's more like it simply turns the volume down. So instead of this constant stabbing like an ice pick, the ice pick just simply gets a little bit more dull. There's a little less stabbing, uh, less volatile, but still there. And this is what my fourth, fifth, or whatever it is, sip of the, of the stuff. And now you, it still stabs, not nearly as bad. Not even close to as bad as it was. But this is what, sip number six? It still stabs. And the um, 
the bitterness of the ethanol is starting to creep through. All those other high note flavors of the, the fruits and the caramel and whatnot are starting to fade out uh, as you get used to them, to a nice subtleness. But that subtleness is being met at the same level as the ethanol bitter that was tucked away to begin with, with still a little poke here and poke there from the uh, from the ethanol bite to it. And as for the heat, you just get like a burn, very prominent in the very first sips. But after a while, they start to fade out fairly well with the stabbing. But man, that stabbing is it's right there. Absolutely right there in your face. So it is it is a good one and it is one to not try at all. Uh 50, 50 split, I'm afraid. It's very rare you come across something like that. Either it's it's good or it's bad, but this one has such strong negative notes and such strong positive notes that it this is definitely uh what are you willing to put up with in your whiskey do you mind those harsh edges so you get those great flavors do you prefer no sharp edges and well the problem is you, you'll lose you'll lose your flavor of what's coming there with it because they're they're teamed together they are married together so yeah the question is do you mind do you not mind do you mind uh the one for the one do you mind if you don't you're gonna lose the other it's i don't know it's it's it is a personal call you're gonna have to have to make try it it is an adventure of the palette i will grant that so it's as they say it's worth the ticket but uh be warned this will either be really good or really bad depending on your personal expectations I would not say it's terrible flavoring, but it's your expectations and what you want to put up with in your whiskey. So there you go. This is Nelson's Green Briar Tennessee Handmade Sour Mash Whiskey. Tennessee Whiskey. Any particular comments will be warmly accepted down below, of course, as always. And, um, yeah, if go out, try it, see what you think. Do a review with, for the rest of us to see on YouTube so we know your thoughts of this particular product. And we all can kind of try to figure out what is, what is generally thought about this particular stuff. This uh, Tennessee handmade sour mash whiskey. And, as always... Keep on drinking.